This is the blue-black mid-range deck that has become pretty popular and standard now. We at World Championship at the World Championships a few weeks back, we saw blue-black control be very popular. This deck is different from from that. This deck has a lot more creatures in it. Um, we saw Jabberwocky or Logan Nettles play this deck on Magic Online and. Since then, it's really picked up popularity online. We haven't seen it as much in paper, but it's definitely a strong choice for a aggro control deck, essentially. Straight blue-black, we're not splashing anything. Drowned Catacombs and Fetid Pools here as the two blue-black lands in the format. Alongside Evolving Wilds and Field of Ruin. So those, the Evolving Wilds and the Field of Ruin... Those are ways that you can trigger revolt in this deck. So that means that the fatal push can kill a three or four can four mana uh, card creature of your opponents. So that makes fatal push much better. And yeah, the mana base is pretty solid. So we do have a lot of creatures, as I already mentioned, gifted aetherborn and kite sail freebooter are your two mana creatures. So Gifted Aetherborn, Death Touch Lifelink, two mana threat. You're getting a good deal for what you're paying at two. It's good against aggressive decks because of the lifelink. And then also against control, it's just a threat that is going to get in there. It's going to be able to pressure your opponent. So it can play a couple of different roles. Then the Freebooter is quickly becoming one of the coolest creatures in the format. Just being able to duress your opponent and have a creature afterwards is really nice. It, it also flies. It does it all. Um, so it's a 2 mana 1-2 flyer. Duress your opponent. Then if it does die, your opponent's going to get that card back. But a lot of times it doesn't die. And if it does, then you can... Target your kite cell freebooter with the, with your own copy of the Scarab God. Same thing with Gifted Aetherborn. So there's a benefit to having these two mana creatures. If they do leave the battlefield and go into your graveyard, you can then target them with the Scarab God. One search for Scanna. Basically, this isn't a complete control deck, so we're not trying to go super long. And then also we have these other two mana plays so we're not playing as many copies of search as other decks do essence scatter you'll see a, a couple different counter spells here not a ton of counter magic but this is one of the better ones in the format then there are four copies of chart of course so this is more or less a two mana divination in the deck because if we've attacked with a creature, it's just two mana draw a card. And we do have these early creatures to attack with. Or if we discard a card, it may be a benefit to put one of our creatures in the graveyard for the Scarab God later. So it's pretty good. Uh, it's, it's a nice card draw spell. We don't need a card like Hieroglyphic Illumination. Because we just have Charter Course at two mana. And there's also some other card draw. So we've got Glimmer of Genius. Glimmer of Genius is an instant. So we need a number of instants to be able to target with our Torrential Gearhawks. Supreme Will, it's versatile, which is what this deck wants. Being able to have a counter spell and a form of card draw. And then the Essence Extraction is good against the aggressive decks. We've got more in the sideboard if we are playing against one of those. We want our removal to be able to gain us life, especially if it's expensive. So you see the Extractions and then also Braska's Contempt. Premium versatile removal spell in this format. The Gaunti, this card has been excellent so far for me. Um, a creature, it's going to get value with alongside your Scarab Gods, but then also just being able to take away an opponent's card is really pretty important. It will swing the game in your favor. 
The Scarab God is the most important card in the deck. It's basically what what the deck is built around is trying to create a board where you can successfully get the Scarab God into play and just run away with the game. That's that's what this deck is about. And then two Gearhawks. We've got some instants, not as many as other decks, so Gearhawk is okay. It's good enough to play two. In the sideboard, we come ready for the control mat matchups. Generally, other control decks may have a little bit of an edge game one, but once we bring in four copies of Duress, four copies of Negate, another search for Ascana, even the Gonti, then all of a sudden I, we become the, fa the favorite. Because sometimes these creatures aren't great game one, but they're really good in sideboard games because it makes your opponent have to leave in removal or if they take out removal then they're screwed anyway so they have to basically they have to either leave in removal or not but either way it's good for you um because you can be the aggressor and then back up the aggression with duresses and the gates essence extraction is your most important removal spell against the aggressive deck so you want to be able to go up to four copies of that card Gonti, I'll board the second copy in, in most matchups that are going to be mid-range or grindy. And then River's Rebuke is good against tokens, actually. This is one of the sleepers right now. Um, and it's a foil to the token strategies. You can not only bounce the tokens, but bounce all of your the enchantments or eternalized creatures that the opponent might have and swing the game in your favor.